One of the most exciting and well-studied extensions of the classical logic we've been considering here is modal logic. Broadly speaking, modal logic deals with qualifications of judgments, not merely as true or false, but as necessarily true or possibly false, and that kind of thing. For example, the board behind me is green, and 2 plus 2 equals 4. Both of these claims are true, but although the board behind me could be a different color, there's no changing the fact that 2 plus 2 equals 4. What we say is that in every world, 2 plus 2 equals 4 is true. So instead of talking about truths in this or that context or in this or that world, we quantify across worlds. A statement is necessary if it's true in every possible world and possible if it's true in at least one. In this way, we define modal operators on the basis of the quantificational operators all and some that we've seen already. This video gives a very brief introduction to the basic syntactic and semantic ideas that underlie modern modal logic. Have a look at these two sentences here. Both of them are false. This sentence is in blue, written in yellow ink, is false, and triangles have five sides is also false. And that's all classical logic really has to say about these things, at least in terms of truth and falsity. But it seems as though triangles have five sides is more false than this sentence is in blue, in part because we could just change this sentence and make it to be in blue, in which case the sentence would come out true. So some truths are subject to change or could be other than they are, and some aren't. And similarly, some truths can't be made false, but other ones can. And systems of logic that are meant to deal with these are broadly grouped under the heading of modal logics. They deal with qualifications of these judgments. We're going to look at the standard and most basic approach to this using possible worlds. So here's how this works. We'll go back to our original propositional calculus that just has sentence letters. We'll use phi and psi, along with just for simplicity's sake, the Boolean connectives, although we've seen that we can get the material conditional and the biconditional out of these. But instead of talking about quantification over objects in the domain, we talk about quantification over worlds. So, for example, take a sentence that will always come out true, phi or not phi. That'll always be true on account of its form. So we can say every world makes this true. So we'll quantify not across objects in the domain, but worlds. We'll say for every world, the world, we'll just write this T here, makes true phi or not phi. And what that tells us then is that this expresses a necessary truth. Similarly, if we want to say something is possible, say a sentence that is not a tautology like phi or not phi, but isn't also contradictory on account of its form. That is to say it has at least one t in its truth table's main column. For example, let's say phi and psi. To say this is possible, we say that there exists a world such that that world makes it true, and so it expresses a possible truth or a possibility. Hence, we can quantify across the worlds. If you like, you can also think of this as quantifying across different states of Tarski with different blocks set up in different ways. The way that this is typically written is with a new operator, which is just the box for necessity and the diamond for possibility. And these range over sentences, phi or not phi, in the case of the first, and phi and psi in the case of the second. Now, here's one interesting thing to end on. Just as all and some are interdefinable in the sense that all is equal to not some not, and some is equal to not all not, necessarily is equal to not possibly not, and possibly is equal to not necessarily not. If we go back up to this example here, triangles have five sides, we can represent this with a new sentence letter. We want to say that it's necessarily not the case, that is to say it's impossible, but by these equivalences down here, plus our double negation, we can derive that it's not possible that triangles have five sides. Treating necessity and possibility in quantificational terms like this was a huge leap for modern logic, and we owe a lot of this to the pioneering work done by Saul Kripke mm -hmm. on the modal operators. That said, modal logic is basically as old as logic itself in the sense that mm -hmm. Aristotle wrote on it, but it wasn't until the 20th century that we started treating modal logic in quantificational terms like these rather than in terms of things like causes, so that triangles are just the sort of thing you can't cause to have five sides and that sort of thing. So there are different ways of cashing this out, but this is very sharply delimited the ways that we think about these operators. And that's the basic idea of sentential modal logic.